habe ich für euch eine Politikwissenschaftlerin aus Berlin. Sie arbeitet dort am IMU mit dem Schwerpunkt Branchenanalyse und Arbeit in der Zukunft. Für euch jetzt mit Wandel im Braunkohlerevier, Lithium-Ionen-Batterien, <coughs> Recycling. Katrin Nicke. Hello and welcome to this translation by C3 Lingo for the talk about battery recycling and brown coal but that is lignite in Germany. Uh, translating to for you today will be Oscar and bread and toast. There is an old saying that says there is a, there is a source like the water and um, Today we'll talk about what sources we want to use and which sources we want to let dry out to make our future worth living. So as an input, we, there sh shall be this study that uh, an institute did together with um, a, uh, another company about uh, battery recycling as a job perspective for the Lausitz area in Germany. Uh, an important aspect for that is to uh, have many disciplines in this um, project and we had five or six disciplines uh, on board for this project. There's physics, there's geography, there's traffic science, uh, management science and and uh, the, the question about how can we um, make an energy area like the Lausitz, where s ever since 200 years fossil uh, fuels are used to, for energy production, um, can, how can we change this into a, a energy production for the future? How can we, where, uh, when looking at the last, um, the last elections in Berlin and Germany, um, had certain results and doesn't really focus on the environment, how can we show a better future for this area? Uh, so we had three basic assumptions. One of them is very simple. The climate change is happening and we have to create climate neutrality in all areas of our life to limit the climate change uh, temperatures uh, to up to 1.5 degrees and um, do and change our energy and traffic ways. So the parts of uh, the traffic in Europe are rising significantly, uh, starting from 2020 in Europe especially because um, certain limits that have been set by the government will apply then, um, which means that manufacturers will get fines if uh, their sold cars are too, have too many based on fossil fuels and if that didn't change uh, enough about the environment. Um, and the battery lifetime of uh, electric vehicles um, also means that there will be a lot of uh, batteries, used batteries, uh, to handle. The third assumption is that the structure of the ecological uh, and economical change should be sustainable. So this will be our three chapters. At first we will have a look at the Lausitz. Why uh, is the Lausitz as so affected? by the energy and traffic change happening. And the second chapter will be about uh, propulsion technologies, which is mostly lithium-ion batteries, and the path that we suggest for a sustainable circular economy. And in the third part, we will try to have look at both ends about where the Lausitz is now and where it should be in the future and how uh, the electronic uh, electromobility and um, energy usage will change and how uh, all of these problems can be um, brought together and uh, how the transposition can be made for this energy region of the future. Um, diese 
this transition is um, a concept that um, came from uh, the US American Union workers and it says that social uh, interests can shouldn't be used against economical is uh, issues. And so with this, um, to the um, to the structure change in the Lausitz. The interesting thing about the Lausitz is that it's a cross-border cultural uh, region where open coal pit mining, uh, open pit coal mining is um, part of the regional identity and. Um, there, uh, it's distributed over the Oberlausitz and Unterlausitz, reaching and from um, reaching from Dresden to Berlin, um, uh, uh, which is in size about 12,000 uh, square kilometers. There are six um, Landkreise. There is the city of Cottbus, and the whole region is seen to be periphery and has a low perspective of the future. Uh, the whole region, region has a strong decline in um, population. And uh, so between 20, uh, 1995 and 2015, there has been a decline of 20%. So every fifth person in the Lausitz has been moved away which also had a strong impact on the um, on the demography because people in average got older there is a high um, percentage of people who are unemployed but it's as low as as uh, as the lowest point in the last 30 years economy is um, based of lots of small and middle-sized um, uh, companies, but uh, there are very high uh, dependences from, uh, from bigger, cons uh, bigger um, corporations um, because they are strongly dependent on them. And so the big uh, corporations decide on the fate of this uh, small local uh, companies. Um, so, for instance, decisions who are um, uh, done in Niedersachsen will affect very strongly the Lausitz. Um, so there is a lot of space for innovation and economic growth from this region. So what are the people working in? Uh, in which sectors are the people working in the Lausitz? So 66% of employees are working in the... Um, 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 this uh, might be surprising if we're talking about a lignite mining region. This is maybe 4% of the 400,000 uh, social insurance um, mandatorily paying uh, employees, uh, where, of course, the groundwater management is also a very uh, difficult and uh, long-term work. And again, it's surprising that the industry uh, part is almost 20% here. And uh, this is in quite high. And within this, the metal and electro um, uh, area is the the biggest one. Every tenth, uh, you every tenth worker in the Lausitz is actually working in the metal and uh, electronics industry. So, a lot of people are are actually uh, just uh, skilled workers, and um, uh, quite a few more of those are actually qualified. And this is very relevant for the recycling. And sixty five thousand. Um, People from the Lausitz are uh, qualified to work in metal and electronics areas. The income um, which is available to households uh, is uh, fairly low comparatively and uh, has not been um, increased with the rest of the country. And 
Um, also, infrastructure is missing a lot. Uh, there's uh, barely any high-speed rail uh, there, and also high-speed internet is not very widespread in the Lausitz area. We think this is a um, base that is required for um, good life there and to make life there possible. So, I want to talk a little more about uh, the meaning of the lignite economy in the region. The mining and uh, resource industry is historically has grown a lot and ever since the glass and textile industries um, failed in the area, it's uh, very central and important for the area um, ever since uh, 1989 or 90. A uh, short view onto the numbers uh, says that there have been 80,000 miners and uh, workers in the energy production sector and the, the lignite power production was 90% uh, uh, of the energy production of the area in the DDR time. And uh, 2016, it only were 8,000 people employed in the coal industry in the Lausitz. And uh, in total, the, the, uh, the aspect of brown coal in the power mix in the Lausitz is now 23%, which is um, fairly similar to how it is today. Um, it has probably moved some more, but uh, if, and if you know more about that, you can tell us more later. But... Um, to say, it's, even though it's just 8,000 employed uh, people in the area, it's um, still uh, the the company running this is still one of the biggest employers in the region, and they also pay um, over average uh, salaries, um, which is uh, more than um, in in uh, Brandenburg and uh, Saxony, for example. Um, so this actually still improves the local buying force uh, that people can provide uh, or when they visit uh, their hairdresser. Barbershop. In <coughs> following the commission for um, for the structural change in Germany, uh, in short, Code um, Commission, um, they decided that it should be by 3030 that um, two thirds of um, employees will be going into um, uh, pensions, and um, we uh, it was uh, planned that the it was planned that uh, employees shouldn't be. Um, shouldn't be set free because of um, companies' uh, strategies, reasons, um, but rather they should uh, get another field of, um, of employment inside the uh, economy. It is projected to 2030 that about two-thirds of employees will go to, um, to um, pension. So how to find perspectives to the uh, remaining employees in the industry? So maybe in a region for energy of future, um, which could be founded in the return of um, of um, products from the um, mobility sector. Uh, the mobility sector is one of the highest emittents of um, carbon uh, emissions. And um, uh, from that, um, personal cars are about 60%. As I said, uh, there is a European Union regulation that by 2020 um, there is um, the uh, uh, the CO2 emission should be reduced by 95 percent. Um, and uh, one decides with electric cars, one dif uh, di differs between the cars for its range and um, its. Um, so there are um, there are small. Uh, uh, so all uh, all new uh, and 
mobile, mobile vehicles will need uh, batteries and uh, many of them actually need very big batteries. Uh, hybrids only need about um, 25 uh, kilograms. But in bigger cars, it can get uh, to, to weigh more, like 250 kilograms, for example, which is quite a lot and um, will be quite relevant uh, when we look into other areas. Um, Hydrogen-operated uh, vehicles are um, more difficult. I would refer to some of the people having held talks here before. Um, tomorrow and the day after that, that's um, mostly just uh, relevant in heavy load trucking. But um, uh, we can look into the, the far future, of course, and see that maybe there will be developments happening there for um, passenger vehicles, but um, probably not as relevant. So we developed three uh, scenarios for how the battery lithium-ion uh, market will develop. Um, given various uh, manufacturer strategies and uh, government policies and um, such things and their um, development status. So we are focusing on the first scenario on the left side, which is battery electric vehicles. Um, and we can see that uh, about 20 to 25, um, we expect around 3 million uh, uh, cars and uh, 2010 to and in 2050, we expect over 30 million vehicles. So that from that, we derived that um, the battery demand will and how big it will be. On the left side, um, the first two columns, you can see in 2030, we expect an uh, a old battery um, market uh, of uh, about 18, wait, 18 to 17, um, and then uh, very relevant uh, becomes from 2030, actually. Um, so with, um, with a deeper view on battery technologies, the lithium-ion battery technology is dominant right now on the market. And we think that will be true for the uh, for the coming years, but it is just a bridging technology, but a bridging technology for the next decades. Uh, why is that? Why is lithium-ion batteries um, the thing? It showed that uh, this technology has uh, optimal uh, power and um, energy density for um, personal cars. The, uh, this, is, this is due to the lithium, which is the uh, lightest metallic element, which, by the way, has to come from somewhere. The availability of the uh, lithium res of lithium resources and soon um, graphite, which is also built in the cells, is from our perspective given. Also, in the amounts that we projected for the market, but there might be shortages, and it's pretty. Uh, pretty certain that there will be uh, shortages because the uh, the mining and um, the research sources aren't available. And from good re for good reasons, the strategic important resources, which are just found in sp some specific countries. Um, they are usually political instable and um, tend to form mono monopolies. So it's a very um, tactile market. And uh, for instance, this spring and in summer, it was becoming uh, obvious that these resources are um, produced under un, um, under very bad conditions, for instance, for children and um, 
usual fundamental standards are not met in this uh, in this industries, and there it came therefore to incidents. Also, the ecological um, um, the ecolog the ecological um, impact is very strong, and uh, it um, leaves big um, a big footprint on the environment. From that and from the amounts of uh, resources we need, it is essential that we implement a circular economy um, to um, to um, um, get to a better um, efficiency for materials and resources and thereby contributing to um, smaller environmental destructions and uh, exploitation. So it is important that we increase the recycling and decrease the uh, resource um, um, dependency. Another idea for increasing the efficiency is uh, the second life loop. This means that battery cells, today battery cells can't be separated from each other. That's not economically um, feasible, but you can by now uh, use them in a different way. For instance, as a buffer for high peak energy demands or um, uh, fluor um, you can use them for uh, home heating and for um, because the, the and this means that the lifetime of um, lithium ion batteries uh, in uh, electric vehicles is currently at around 10 years so the battery should probably be exchanged or uh, will be exchanged before the car itself will be replaced the, the car lifetime is currently expected to be about 15 years and at the same time we have uh, currently no real regulation about how to handle and collect these old batteries, how uh, the, the recollection is organized, how high the recycling quotes are supposed to be. And for example, if there uh, is a mandatory return policy for <laughs> manufacturers. So, but what exists already is uh, recycling processes for uh, these batteries ever since 2009 to 2016 uh, there were three big um, research projects uh, mostly uh, financed by the German environmental agency and uh, the return uh, quotas for the individual materials uh, cobalt has 94% return uh, lithium has 86% uh, uh, and uh, nickel even gets us 97% back. Of course, still there is um, demand for more research here, but what we can say already, and that's fairly interesting, is uh, when looking at how um, usable and feasible the, the economic circle for lithium is and um, the, the energy demand for that, um, the conclusion there was that the economic uh, uh, game, the zero sum of that is that it's definitely possible. So um, there's uh, here's a um, chain of uh, resource extraction for battery recycling. Um, according to the current uh, state of research, this will probably change in the next couple of years of research. And of course, there's a lot of demand for uh, continuous development of many of these processes and standardization of that. Um, for example, standardization of modules and uh, automatic um, deconstruction of battery modules. But what is fairly interesting is that the job profiles that uh, result here is that the, the demand for workers here and uh, skill matches actually the uh, available uh, skills in the Lausitz area. So, um, for example, deconstruction of modules and uh, decharging of cells, the 
pyrotechnical, uh, hydrotechnical and uh, such processing and uh, the indirect employment in uh, terms of um, energy production for the recycling um, factory and uh, of course the collection of the old cells and distribution and reusing of them. Ideally with a uh, entirely new battery cell manufacturing in uh, another local um, worth creating system. <coughs> From this knowledge we put uh, we took another view on the Lausitz and the goal with the common uh, work of um, state, um, country and uh, um, cities is to um, make an attractive and future-oriented um, economy here in the, re in the region of Lausitz as it was proposed by the Coal, co uh, coal Commission. So there seems to be a consensus on the current um, current discussions. The way to the um, to the way to this goal is still under argument, and we want to emphasize that the change of structures is um, is a transitional um, is a transitional phenomenon, and one needs to. Um, see all the social and economical challenges and need to analyze them before there are decisions on the on the region which so it's very interesting which potentials has the Lausitz and which is also not that much known then that it's a um, let's uh, let's um, mining region for instance, there is a very interesting landscape of um, companies. Um, there are the biggest wind farms in Germany. I don't exactly know how much of them are operational right now. And there is research in the uh, area of hydrogen production. There are plants for big uh, storage plants for energy and the basically the infrastructure in the region is is just tailor made for the energy production and the energy sector so also the um, the coal mines ha uh, offer very big potentials for uh, after use there is, for instance, the BTU Cottbus Senftenberg, where is an uh, institute for battery research and recycling. There is a small, small-parted uh, economy, and uh, this offers the, the advantage that small companies offer a high agility and. Um, so they can d uh, develop new technologies fast if they are supported in a sufficient way and can produce um, educated uh, people who are needed in future, which uh, can be then employed. From that, we see the potential to implement a circular economy for battery recycling with uh, extremely so with this to build up an uh, worth gaining chain in the region that is uh, sufficient which means that we had a regional uh, economical circle our study was published shortly before um, Tesla announced to build uh, electric cars near Berlin and there is next to, uh, next to Zwickau, near Dresden, a um, uh, factory from uh, Volkswagen, which are working on a very high pace to produce electric cars, which is just one of two in Germany. From 2021 here, about uh, 300,000 electro vehicles should be manufactured here. And with this perspective, the Lausitz won't be so periphery anymore. 
Berlin, Dresden und it is, We see that it's between Berlin, Dresden and uh, Poland. So basically it zoomed more outside of this between Poland, Germany and Czech uh, Republic. So this is a great, um, great position to, to bring all the um, agents together and... Uh, so 2030 to 2050, um, the creation of uh, old batteries, uh, lithium-ion batteries, cor uh, is correlating quite well with uh, the exit from fossil energy creation. And for the way, in, within the region uh, of the future, where the battery recycling is maybe just one of the puzzle pieces, we... Uh, ha created some approaches and ideas and recommendations, a whole catalog of them uh, from which a integrated regional development concept can be uh, can be derived, which will both uh, uh, create jobs and economy but also uh, will improve the social and ecological uh, situation. And fr with this, I will come to the end. I would like to tell tell you about these six points that I just took from our um, action recommendations. So the first thing is that we should uh, work on the improvement and um, uh, of the EU battery guidelines, um, which means more um, mandatory return policies for manufacturers, uh, better organization and systems for battery recycling and returning, uh, the recycling quotas, um, what uh, quotas we need for which uh, resources exactly. And um, so currently the battery law um, doesn't even know the lithium-ion battery currently. It's then we need, and this uh, is not just for the Lausitz, but is probably relevant uh, in for all of the processes in uh, this area of uh, improving and recreating the energy economy, is that to coordinate uh, the the different um, institutions uh, that are in there, both uh, mayors for individual towns, but also the entire European Union. Um, their ideas, uh, ideas and interests, and those have to be coordinated and uh, interchanged, so they don't run to into nothing. Um, so um, the the infrastructure help that are supposed to be. Uh, given to the Lausitz area are supposed to be um, used effectively. Then next to also uh, knowledge transfers uh, should happen and uh, be ensured uh, for both the knowledge institution in and around uh, the Lausitz in, in Cottbus, for example, uh, and also uh, with Dresden and Berlin and especially, and that's, um, uh, we, we notice that a lot, and also in between the disciplines. We, as uh, social um, scientists, as natural scientists, as uh, many of these differences, we have to get into contact and the structural processes and the questions about the society, we have to structure them in such a way that we don't get into singular individual results. Uh, the society uh, in that don't really take the society in general into account. What we also need is transparency. And uh, transparency uh, in these processes uh, and more bottom-up uh, participation, which uh, means that the citizens um, just like the employees uh, are supposed to get uh, the possibilities to get into contact with each other, to talk to the people making the decisions, to get into dialogue with them. 
and not just um, tell people their opinion, but also um, get the room to to develop this process um, along with the professionals. This is uh, for us mostly important because only this way we can um, create this information base that is important. And uh, so there's this um, process, this timeline uh, about to be uh, developed and uh, created for many years and uh, will be uh, deployed in the area in Lausitz by uh, an, a uh, agency there and judging by this uh, transparency thing um, this process was opened up and um, citizens have been invited to participate um, but um, then it, it can't just stay with one day participation events but the, the citizens have to be taken along uh, all the way and um, uh, the, the citizens have to carry this plan and um, the ideas as well in order for the entire project to work. We think it's very important to finally again um, invest more in um, ec education and qualification uh, sectors um, because the demands, uh, the demand for lifelong learning is supposed to reflect in the possibilities uh, that uh, citizens have for educating and re and further educating themselves to learn new things about uh, all of these new things. A uh, very simple step, for example, would be um, that in uh, the, the state of Saxony, the uh, further education uh, policy would be implemented, which uh, other provinces in Germany already have. Um, and participate in there uh, for um, this this one special policy where every employee every two years um, has ten years of um, of a right to be um, educated further, um, which they can use in order to um, get into the the jobs of the future better um, and to be uh, readied for for those. So the second to last point um, is is that this, uh, which is one that will only work uh, in our eyes, with uh, which has to has to work, is that good work has to be created, which means that next to the further education possibilities for people, um, it should also be possible to um, work together with the professional and the personal work that one does. Um, it, there shouldn't be um, bad uh, worker um, policies like um, workers that are only temporary and forlorn. Um, there should be um, more participation uh, options and uh, chances for employees and um, many of the employees actually don't want to just turn up and press buttons all day but they want to maybe um, bring new ideas to the table and um, work uh, on the processes as well because they are the ones that actually know the most about them being as close to them as they are and um, so everybody who's uh, interested in the topics and um, uh, should be able to uh, participate so for the last point um, to stress this again the creation of equal life uh, chances um, people of certain areas shouldn't be declares, declared and become uh, losers of uh, the progression of society and um, the 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 policies that exist uh, and this this idea should not be um, just uh, deployed and um, invested in, in Germany and that area, but also in all of the European Union. So, this is it. Thanks for your attention.
Um, wir haben leider nicht viel Zeit, deswegen eine Frage aus dem Internet. Okay, so we don't have a lot of time, so there will probably just be one question from the Internet. Um, so you showed a lot of uh, possibilities for uh, what can happen. There was also a discussion in the IRC channel about the, the actual feasibility of this project. Is, are there already policies and uh, maybe subventions and investi uh, investing in the area um, for this um, area and its industrial potential, um, or is this mostly just a plan? So there are plans, and no, there is a recommendation of the Commission um, from the um, federal government, and there are 70 mil, uh, billion um, euros uh, in, in a structural fund, um, which are provided by the um, participants of the Coal uh, Commission with the, with the perspective to build here um, built here this industrial region but the results are still open and uh, there is need for participation unfortunately for further questions we don't have any time if you have any question come forth to the stage uh, maybe one more time applause for the wonderful Catherine this talk was Thank mm -hmm. you.